sometimes when he would go see these friends, he would leave at these late hours at night. Certain areas in Bushwick, you know what I'm saying, is like bad. They even call one side of Bushwick the dark side. My friends started seeing my brother over there. What's Sean doing over here, man? Around this time, he just changed his number, and that's why I didn't have it. I had his house number. You know, he was just real discreet. When he came to me and told me he changed his number, that concerned me. I wanted to know why he changed his number. Maybe because of all the pressure that he was going through. I feel like um, certain people he started beginning not to have full trust in. There was a few that I felt was just too needy, wanted too much. There was some that I just didn't get good vibes from. He was just very, very picky of who he told what to and, you know, who went with him places as well. Sean used to work at the Burger King, King's Plaza Mall, and he just got off work. And we were hanging outside for a while, and Sean went upstairs and changed his clothes and came back outside. I, I was like, Sean, where are you going? He was like, I'm going. He was going to the village. He was like, I'm going to, par I'm going to a party. And it was so late, and he was getting on a train. I'm, I'm like, are you sure you're going to be all right? He said, I will, sis, I will. Gave him a hug, and he walked around the corner to Broadway. And that was the last time I saw him. That's when he told me then that he was making some changes. He, he would be cutting certain people out of his life because he realized they just wasn't meant to be in his life. But he told me you know, that he was moving. He was just making some changes as far as who he socialized with, or he, who he'd be around, or better yet, who his friends were. Um, and that was the last thing he said to me. I was on the phone talking to somebody. I was in my office, and he came through, and he had a black bag in his hand, a black garbage bag, and he said, um, suddenly he was leaving. And I figured, you know, well, I'll talk to you, you know, again when you, you know, you come back or whatever. Then I asked him, are you sure there's anything going on? He said no. He left from here like two weeks after I talked to him. That was the last time I talked to him on the phone. And I asked him, yo, everything good out there? You straight? Everything all right? He was like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Everything all right? I was like, you sure? He was like, yeah. I was like, because mom, I don't know why, but you know how mommy is. Mommy... You know what I'm saying? She worried or whatever, whatever. She thinking something wrong with you. He was like, nah, I'm good. And I was on the phone. He was like, all right, I'm leaving. I'm moving. And I said, all right, we're going to talk to you. And he left. And that was the last time I seen him. Within a week. Within a week. Two weeks. Two weeks, week and a half. A week before my brother went missing. His, his sexual orientation has nothing to do with why he was killed. It's, a, it, it's way deeper and it's way more personal than him being gay. There was some type of beef that no one knew about. Whatever beef there was, it went, beyond, it, it went above and beyond everyone's head and no one really knew because Rashawn did not ever really speak of it. He always had the situation under control. I just think it's too many secrets. It's some, like you said, I believe somebody that was hanging with him at the time, especially that week. That week of it really all, whatever added up to all boiling down to everything really came to a head that week. No matter how long you run, eventually you're gonna get caught. Sooner or later, it's gonna come out. Sooner or later, it's gonna come out. <laughs>